Hello, I would like to show you how to set up a GitHub repository for C++ where, when you want to add continuous integration onto that GitHub, uh, especially tuned for doing test-driven development. So first I will show you how to create a GitHub repository, activate Travis, create some minimal simple C++ code, create a file to let the continuous integration do its work, push it to GitHub and let's see what happens. And note that there will, I won't use any tool, I will just using the command line. Um, so it's very, very minimal. I won't use any fancy uh, test frameworks like a, a boost test or a Google mock. All right, so let's create a GitHub repo first, github.com. And I'm already logged in, so let's create a repository called them. Um, Let's call it, well, CPP, C++, continuous integration, a demo. And I'm going to add a readme, I'm going to ignore the C++ files, I'm going to use the GNU general public license version 3.0 of course. And I've created the repository, so step one is done. Step two, activate Travis. I like to do this now because, um, uh, because it has to, um, it responds when you push and sometimes if you've already pushed and forgot to activate your repo uh, then uh, it doesn't work. The first thing you need to do is, uh, I'm fast, so you first have to sync your account and now I, I can already activate it if I know the name of the repository then I just use a repository, fill in the name of the thing I want to activate and they activate it here. So I already activated Travis on my simple, humble uh, GitHub repository. All right, let's uh, clone it. Uh, let's do that first. Clone GitHub. Clone GitHub repo. And uh, so let's do that. So I, I like to just copy paste here the thing. Well, git clone it. Now I have it on my computer. There it is. It's a bit uh, empty still. Right, done that. Let's create some C++ code tuned for test-driven development. Well, we can do that. Uh, mousepad. I like to use my mousepad as an editor. It's the simplest one. Of course, I use fancier things, uh, but uh, not in this demo. So we're going to do some test-driven development. That means we're going to use if not defined and debug. So if in debug, then we do stuff. We're going to call test else we're going to um, to, to run the release mode let see out release mode of course no need for capitals there and to verify that we're going to assert that 1 equals 2 which is false but must be removed in release mode and our tests will be trivially simple Void test. Well, let's make it also do C out there as well. C out debug mode. And our tests will be nothing more than assert 1 plus 1 equals 2. Alright, so that's the best that the setup it doesn't compile yet because you need to include C assert and I need to include IO stream. Alright. So um, in test-driven development, these are the lines. If I define, if I do not define no debug, which means if I am in debug, then these lines get compiled, and then all our tests are run. So this test is trivially simple, I know, but it's a minimal example. Else, if we are in release mode, then all the search should be removed. This is also a choice. You can keep, you can uh, try, yeah, you can choose to keep them in anyways. Uh, and just show on the screen release mode. All right, so let's uh, test my program because uh, well there will be bugs. Uh, I just use a G++ locally. Oops, so if I now run it, I'm in debug mode. So by default, I'm in debug mode. But if I add uh, minus D and debug, if I compile it differently, I'm in release mode. Yeah, so this is uh, this is the way. If I did not define and debug, 
if I did not define it, then I'm in debug mode. That's exactly what we saw. All right, that's a that, that's a that, that's a code. That's cool. We have a debug mode, release mode. Uh, now we're going to ship this to Travis because we've created our C++ code. It's completely fit for test-driven development. Let's create this Travis.yaml file. So it's called the .travis YML, you pronounce as YAML, yet another markup language. And actually I'm already going to copy paste these lines here because that's exactly what we're going to let Travis do. So at the top you have to write language. Actually I'm not even sure, I think you can also remove that. Script. So what are you going to do first? Well I'm going to compile it. I'm going to run the executable so I can see the debug mode and I'm going to also let it run a release mode uh, just to see if that also works release mode release mode which is optional like sometimes I don't do that so because there's no full code coverage or whatever but this is definitely run the tests run the tests Tack. so this is just a so you see that I put them uh, below each other. Uh, that's that's um, obligatory in YAML scripts, and you can just do whatever you want here. So I can also just like whatever your bash uh, does. You can make it everything that bash can do. You can do here. But of course, this just makes no sense to do so. So, all right, well done. Next step, push. Let's gonna do that. Get add up. Get commit. Go, Travis. All right, so now we've pushed our code. Let's see what Travis thinks of it. So if we're going to the Travis page, let's go to the build history because that's the first place it will chip in. There it is, go Travis. Let's take a look at it. Let's move a bit to the right. Let's see if we can get rid of the, yeah, there we go. So um, what it's going to do, I think this will last about 20 seconds or so, the last time I've checked, is now it's preparing a virtual container and we'll run everything we want. So, um, but it still needs to, um, so it thinks it's Ruby. I'm not sure if that's the, that's the way to go. Yeah, but it's setting up stuff. It should fail if it, can you see the config? Ah, there it is. So you can already see the configuration. So it thinks it's Ruby. Well, let's see if that works because we can save a, a line else. We can set a language to C++. But let's see if this works. So it's now creating a virtual machine. And uh, well, this just works brilliantly. So it compiled main.cpp on Travis on the clean computer, ran it in debug mode, uh, compiled it for release mode and ran that. Alright, now as a final thing I'm going to uh, add a test that crashes. So at 1 plus 1 equals 3, we know this is mathematically false. So I now break the build. I'm not going to break the build. I'm going to also show how that uh, looks like. Break the build. Get push. Yeah, so it so, in that, uh, so it's common that when you collaborate, uh, well, people break things, and that's also, uh, also, well, it happens. And this is how it looks like if you break the build, it will fail. And just take a sort of configuration file. Is still, what well, thinks it's Ruby, but apparently that doesn't matter in this context. So let's take a look. Of course, you should do more, um, like more extensive tests in the end. But this is just a minimal setup. All right, there she goes. <laughs> it sets up a, a version of Ubuntu. It uses Trusty Tar, I think. Yeah, Trusty. So it's a, it's a still a bit it's a bit old, but uh, but it's a good enough for most things. Right, so it's running some code now apparently. Oh, it already failed. Break the build. Let's take it. And how do we get this like correct? 
because it should show the error somewhere. Ah, there it is. Here it says, assertion 1 plus 1 equals 3 failed breaks. Right. So I hope I've showed you in a short amount as of time as possible how to create a GitHub repo with Travis around it, clone it, create some code, let Travis tell Travis what to do, push and view the log, and also break the build. Alright, that was the video and I wish you a very nice day.